Go and drive up. Good morning, everybody. How are you? How's everybody doing? Uh, we uh, should be getting into SpaceX's Transporter 6 coverage here momentarily. Discovery, go at throttle up. Ron, 50 months. Thanks, buddy. There's the strimmer. Yeah. Fellas, the parts for the truck didn't come in on time. Jack, hey, from Central Florida, how are you? Yeah, so, I mean, with the Transporter 6 launch, I'm not sure how much, uh, I'm not sure how much, you know, truck will be working on this morning, but, well, here I am. I, I am here. Uh, I Discovery. am no going to up. need coffee here. Smoke Chica Fella, Miller from Texas. Howdy. Oh, there we go. SpaceX is live. Here we go. Getting right into Transporter 6 coverage. We're going to start this start this New Year's stream. Or post-New Year's... First stream of the New Year. That's the... Coffee. Coffee. Yeah. Co coffee. Okay. Use your words. I do. I dude. I don't word good. You want somebody that words good? Find a languager. Discovery. Go at throttle up. Discovery, go at throttle up. Thank you for all the subs this morning. Oh, wow. We're getting ready. Real quick. Discovery, go at throttle up. Go for launch. Happy New Year, Hammernails. Oh, fellas, before before anybody redeems it, just real quick, uh, no hat changes today. Discovery, go at throttle up. No, no, no hat changes today. Okie dokie. No hat changes today. That's all I'm gonna say. No hat changes today, dudes. Falcon 9 has landed. Anyway. Rocket launches. You are looking at Let's a go. live view of Falcon 9 set to lift off at 9.56 a.m. Eastern Time. See the Space Launch Complex 40. Keep my head. I'm just going to have to. I'll be right back. Florida. Gotta get the coffee. Happy New Year, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. I'm Shiva, and I'm a space operations engineer here at SpaceX, and I'm joining you from our headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Today, we are launching SpaceX's Transporter 6 mission, and as the name suggests, it's our sixth dedicated small sat rideshare program launch. This mission will mark our first launch of 2023 and our 200th mission of all time. Now, on this flight are 114 spacecraft, including CubeSats, 
picosats, microsats, and Did orbital transfer part? vehicles carrying spacecraft to be deployed at a later time. We'll have a total of 82 deployment events, which will begin around the T plus 58 minute mark, and they'll last for approximately 30 minutes. Now we are expecting to lose ground station coverage partway through the deployment sequence, so only some of the deployments will be visible today. However, when we're back in range of those ground stations, we do expect to have telemetry and hear audio confirmation over the nets. Now, if you'd like to see a full Arc. list of today's Arc. deployments, head over to SpaceX.com. No. With liftoff just about 6 minutes and 20 seconds away from now, let's take a moment to learn more about the Falcon 9. I'm not 9 changing my hat, dude. I told you. Now, to give you a sense of scale, this Falcon 9 rocket is standing about 3 meters short of the height of the Taj Mahal in India. It was named after the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars, and it gets that nine number from the number of Merlin 1D engines that are at the base of the rocket. Stage one fuel load is complete. What you see on your screen. Steve, what do you got? Okay, you got a noob question. What are the three white things for? Sorry, noob question. The three white things. Are you talking about this stuff over here? Yeah, for real. No hat changes today. Yeah, no, our arc is just messing around, guys. It's all good. Sorry for not knowing, but who is Ken Block? Um, uh, the white standing things. Uh, usually f fuel tanks. Those those Delivery. are commodity no tanks. That's up. what they're called. They're called commodity tanks. So over here, those are pneumatic tanks. Uh, helium, helium and nitrogen. Uh, RP one is over here. So kerosene. And then liquid oxygen is actually uh, that way. The, the LOX tank is over there. See where the cold bits are? That's what all that stuff is, if that's what you're asking. To the left. Uh... Guys, I'll, I'll talk more about this later, dude. We got a rocket launch. Oh, you're talking about the lightning towers. That, that thing right there, Steve? It's a lightning tower. Uh... Rockets make explosions. That's what they do. They take they they make something explode and then they shoot it out of a funnel. Right? Shoot it out of a funnel. That 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 big flamey thing that happens down here. Uh you don't want that getting hit by lightning. I don't I don't think I need to say why. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Still a little early. These are yeah, those are lightning towers. Um lightning in Florida happens a lot. You don't want this getting hit by lightning. That the <laughs> It's not good for it. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry for not being able to ask the right, right question. Hey, we got you there, dude. We got you there. It's all good. Flamey and down. Yep. It's all good, Steve. Don't worry about it. Yeah, those are lightning towers, dude. Every pad in Florida has these things. Um, yeah, rockets, rockets and lightning don't jive very well. They figured that out during Apollo 12, believe it or not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Two mark. Florida problems. Looks like an absolutely beautiful day in Florida. Yeah, Paul, Paul, Based Paul on 12. The weather mm. report, we're only tracking a 10% probability of violation. Okay. So that means that we are a 90% chance of going. So let me let me actually talk about the rocket here for a change. Sorry about that. I'm doing a road to space. Um sorry. <laughs> that was messed up. Um so the, this is the first Falcon 9 launch of 2023. Uh this is the Transporter 6 mission. Transporter 6 is a rideshare mission. It's a commercial rideshare mission. So there's like, uh, I think it's like 114 small satellites inside of Falcon 9's fairing. And honestly, it looks like a giant Christmas tree of satellites. And the payload attachment, payloads, it has a bunch of payload attachment fittings just stacked on top of each other. Just stacked on stacks on stacks of satellites. This thing has just tiers of it. You'll see it when the fairing deploys. Uh, this is SpaceX's effort to capture the small sat launch market. Uh, so they do what's called commercial ride shares, uh, where everybody, a bunch of small satellites, share a ride on a much bigger rocket. One individual satellite, one of these small satellites, wouldn't be enough to constitute like an entire Falcon 9 launch, right? But if you take 100 of them and you stack them on top of each other, you're going to get somewhere along the mass of like a normal Falcon 9 payload, right? 
So SpaceX runs these transport missions, and believe it or not, it's like one of the cheapest ways to get into space on a, on one of these rideshare missions. They their price point is way below everybody else. Yeah, launcher. Yep. Yeah, launcher has a payload on this. Yep, that's right. Yep. Yeah, up here, all the sats are up there. Oh, there's a vent. So what's, actually, we don't really get to see this. What they're doing is they're getting all the, uh, they're getting all the liquid oxygen out of the fuel lines that go to the second stage, which indicates we are pretty dang go for a launch here. So I'm going to shut up and, uh, to have control of the vehicle through the rest of the mission. Let's Shiva talk from here. Don't forget Momentus finally heading into orbit after licensing delays. There you go. Next major milestone hey, Ryan. will be the launch director giving their <laughs> final go for launch. Go for launch. Here we go. And with that call, all systems go for launch. Let's watch as this Falcon yeah, 9 so takes the right. Transporter 6 mission to orbit. T minus 30 seconds. Yeah, right, guy. Yeah. <laughs> Creeper, yeah, we should do that. T minus 15. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Sound suppressors are on. 5, 4, 3. Green flash. 2. One and lift off. Looks good. First launch of 2023 from SpaceX. The girls pitching down range. Yep, everything looked textbook there. Telemetry guys saying uh, all nine engines are performing good. Just about 40 seconds into flight, Falcon no, 9 clearing the tower at Space Launch Complex 40 and making its way to orbit. We are currently throttling down uh, the Berlin 1D engines on the first stage in preparation for the point of max Q. That's a point of maximum aerodynamic pressure. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Maximum aerodynamic pressure is the point when the highest stresses are experienced by the vehicle during the ascent. I'll get that information here. I'll see you. Give me one moment. It's cute. If my mouse decides that, we to are you know, the go off the screen, there we go. On the vehicle. Coming up, we've got several events back to back. The first of those is main engine cutoff, or MECO. There will shut down the nine Merlin 1D engines in preparation for stage separation. Stage separation is where the pneumatic pushers will separate the first and second stages. And then Ooh, we'll have second nice engine shot. number one. We just heard a call out for MVAC chill-in, so we began chilling in the turbo pumps in preparation to start the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. While the second stage yeah. engine is burning, the first stage will be performing a flip maneuver, and then flip. it will do a boost back burn. So this that is boost, boost back burn will ignite three of the Merlin 1D engines. This is a... Uh, uh, to make the first stage's way back towards land. Why are you Shatner pausing? Stop it. Today with this first stage. Shiva, I swear. So those events back to back. Miko, stage separation. First stage flip. Second engine start number one. And then the boost back burn. This is booster number 1060. There's main engine cutoff. It's flight 15 for this booster. Stage separation confirmed. Okay, this is a good separation. And stage one's turning around. And now it's going to get pummeled by the second stage. There we go. Oh. Stage one perfect startup. There we go. So there is those Very five nice. events. Awesome shots from the ground. You can see the first stage boosting away. Very nice. on the left part of your screen, and the second stage continuing to burn. Now, this burn on the first stage will last about uh, 47 seconds. 
and the second stage is going to continue burning for a while. It yeah, will it's going to dog its like burn it's until the T plus eight minutes and uh, twenty. That was sick, dude. Mark. Did you see that? You see the first stage turning around? That's cool. This is the fifteenth flight for Shortly that stage, by the way. After the boost back burn 15. ends, the next major One, milestone five. will be fairing separation. You'll see that on the right hand side of your screen. Yeah, right, Rocket. That wasn't that long ago. That was like less than five years ago. Where if we saw a reused booster, it'd be good. Now, now multiple boosters. Stage one boost back shut down. Fifteen times. Okay. So there Gridfin, is successful shutdown. Gridfin should be deploying now. Burn. You're seeing some pulses there from oh, the ground. It's a life from our You're at control it. system. There's Use one other booster that has fifteen. As our Six, attitude ten, control medium, 61, and it helps us two, be pointed 61, in the correct like direction. Here you can see the nice so forth. There you go. on the first stage on the left hand side of your screen. Pretty much, Doc. Okay. As we are Here we go. also deploying our fairing grid fairing fence. Look at Christmas tree with all the satellites on it. The right hand side of your screen, you just saw fairing <laughs> separation. We may get a view of those fairing halves. In fact, you can see it it's a good way on to start the right the hand side of your screen, just behind the Merlin vacuum. No back order. To planet Earth. We will be attempting grid to fins are out. both of these fairing halves once they land back in the water on a recovery vessel named Bob. Bob. No, it's not Doug. It's Bob. Hello there. Now, if you're just joining us, welcome. We're about four and a half minutes into today's mission. We're in the first of two Merlin vacuum burns. First burn will last until about the T plus eight Billy's minute and 20 nuevo, second amigo. mark. Next See? major milestone will be the Billy's first stage's entry nuevo. burn. First stage is on the left-hand side of your screen. And we're now looking at a view uh, down the body of the first stage. You missed the fairing catches. The grid fins back at planet Earth. Look, there's a uh, satellite the beach burn right there. In order to Coco Beach right slow there. Down the first stage before hitting the densest parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Vehicles are on a nominal trajectory. Without that burn, we'd be only using the atmosphere to oh, slow down the top of the line, and that puts a lot of extra stresses on the rocket. So we ignite three of those Merlin 1D engines. Yep, to there's slow Cocoa down Beach right the there. Thickest parts of the Satellite Beach is right there. Been Watch, you should see the port. Off. You should see Port Canaveral right Eastern here. Time from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And we're carrying the Transporter 6 mission on the second stage right now. It's Dude. SpaceX's sixth dedicated small sat rideshare program and our first mission of 2023. Look at that. We're targeting at least three dedicated rideshare flights, two sun synchronous There's orbit. There's a banana river. Year. We also offer opportunities to ride to orbit on our Starlink look, mission. You can see Orlando Launch from up here. Once a week. Dude, look. Now There's Central Florida. Sats Holy crap. Space on our Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy. The nitrogen attitude control thrusters are now making sure that the pointy end. It actually, well, pointy end. I was going to say pointy end facing down, but that's not really it. It's flying business end first. There's Port Canaveral right there. That's SR SR 401, SR 528 is right there. There's the causeway. Here we go. It needs to be more pointy. It's not pointy enough. What a what a shot, man! Not only you can see all the way to Orlando. Dude, I can see, it. dude. I could, I saw Sanford Airport there for a second. That's a long way away. That's not close. Oh, uh, here we go. So there's the VAB right there. 39A, 39B. Slick 36 is right there. There's the Cape Canaveral skid strip. Shuttle landing facility is right there. Supersonic retro propulsion is right there. I don't know if you can see it. Pretty quick burn. This one will last about. So, guys, when it's cold, and don't get me wrong, it's not cold in florida but it's colder when it when it, in the winter time right uh you can actually see further because there's heat distorts heat distorts light so that's why everything is so crisp because it's winter time i know winter in winter in florida that, that's a good joke as we are slowing but see that's why you can see everything that's why it's so crisp you're not going to get shots like this during the summer stage one fts has saved Okay, there's the skid strip. We there's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. This booster for the 15th time today, targeting this land landing at landing zone one. Land landing at one landing more zone burn, one. Which is the landing burn on the first stage. We'll ignite just a single Here we go. engine. 
The landing site is happen. right where my mouse cursor is. It's gonna fly uh, like over it and then come down. down. Dude! Stage one, oh! Oh, that's awesome. All right, fire it. Boom! Oh, that's so good. That is so good. Oh, oh, I'm. I don't know what to do with my hands. Now, during this, we'll also hear a call out of second engine cutoff on the Bruh. second stage. Sonic booms. Stage one landing leg deploy. Oh. Chico. Oh, that was mint. Confirmed. That was mint. You awake? So landing is you awake? We also heard a call out there for Seco. Nominal parking orbit. We got Seco a nominal parking is orbit. Second engine cutoff number one. We just heard a call out. Fifteen as well flights for, for ten sixty. Orbit. Not and bad. With that we have landed the Falcon Nine. Dude. It's our one hundred sixty first landing of an orbital class rocket. This booster is fifteenth. Now coming up, our next major event will be in about forty five minutes. That is for second engine start number two. And that'll be followed shortly by I know, Laz, you see that? payload deploy of the first 35, excuse me, the first It came down a little bit fast, almost, but I think, it's, I mean, she's fine. We're going to leave you with for. views from space. Oh. And we'll see you back Dude, shortly. Dude, look at that trajectory. That's awesome. Number two. It skirted the coast of Florida because they're trying to get polar from the Cape. So if they launch due south out of the Cape, right, it'll fly right over Miami. You don't. You don't want that in case something goes wrong. So it flies out over the ocean and then goes around Miami Expect and Fort Lauderdale. Okay. That's cool, man. What's the purpose of parking orbit? Um, usually to check out onboard systems tech, but in this particular case, it's to get the right phasing to go into the right orbit. You don't want to fly over Cuba. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they don't want to fly over Havana. Havana. Yeah, you don't want to fly over that. That. <laughs> right now, stage two, it's making its way over uh, Guatemala and Honduras. Honduras. No, wait, Guatemala's up here. Uh, El... El... No. So Panama's right there. Bolivia's right here. No, Belize is up there. It's Costa Rica. That's what it is. Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, and then Venezuela, Colombia. Yeah. Yeah, I think I got that right. Yeah, sweet. Um, no hat changes today, bud. On point, gracias. So here we'll keep it going. We'll keep it going. We have Peru, Chile, French guy Hanya is over here, Brazil obviously, and then I always forget the names of the other small, the other small boys that are right there. Hey, somebody gifted Rocket Guy a sub. Oh, surname. Can't see Chile here. You can see like kind of the top of it. It's like right there. It runs along the. It runs along this mountain range, which is the Andes. Yeah, Panta, that's not happening. That was an old Dutch colony. What wasn't an old Dutch colony? W. Orange country, bad. Go back to those landing shots. What about these guys? Who knows what those are? Right there. No, I, I like doing the geography thing. Junie, give me one second. What about those? Who knows what those are? So it's on your cap. Nice move. The Galapagos. Yep. Known for what species? Biology. Let's go. Tortoises. That's right. And finches too. 
Mm -hmm. That's right. Good job, chat. All right, landing shot. I want to see that one more time, please. In the Florida area, you may hear Dude, some look at, look at how crisp Stage it is, one man. FTS is safe. We are a big lizard as well. You forgot Darwin. You're a Darwin. Got him. Targeting this land landing at landing zone one. We've got just one more burn, which is the landing burn on the first stage. We'll ignite just a single center Merlin engine. That's cool, Spectre. That'll happen. Uh, just before yeah, I noticed that down. tweet, Forge. Yeah, I Stage saw that one. one. Dude, look at that. So, what's going on right here? I'll give you the play-by-play -play breakdown. What what you see right there is, so they're, they're, they're priming the engine. The engine, actually, the engine's pretty much primed. You're going to see the green flash. So, that's the triethyl aluminum and triethyl boring. They, no, they're not, pyrophoric not. igniter fluids. Basically, when T T A T B when they combine, if they find something with that, like, combination there if it finds something with oxygen in it it explodes there's oxygen in the motor because they they pre-chilled it right so you see a nice green the flash right, right there and then boom go. there you go stage one you can see the center engine stage has one landing burn. we'll expect to see oh, four stage landing two legs thermal guidance for a soft touchdown at landing zone one and then it's just it's just a combination of using the grid fins here the acs and the gimbal on and the engine to get this thing right look at how much those grid fins are working cut off on the second stage oh that's so good man oh that's so good look at that stage one landing leg deploy seco stage one landing confirmed that's so nice. The landing is complete. We also heard a call out there for Seco. Nominal parking orbit. Labrico. Seco is second engine cutoff number one. We just heard a call out as well for nominal parking orbit. Oh, uh, that's the short With version, that, W. We no one cares about that one. I didn't watch that Falcon one. 9. It's our 161st landing of an orbital class rocket. This booster is 15. Dude, can you believe that? Here, let me back this up. What can we see in the background over here? So that's that's Slick 37B right there. I'm not 100% sure what that is. Uh, it looks... That's up Missile Row. That could be a bunch of different things. There's the processing, the processing stand for Falcon 9's first stage. They fold the grid... They fold the... Not the grid fins. They fold the legs up on that stool that's behind it. Oh gosh, Adrian is here. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> What's going on, Adrian Raiders? Come and stay. Here we come. <laughs> Nobody's expecting the Italian Inquisition. Wait, that's not how that works. What's going on, guys? You saw that Falcon 9 launch? Dude. How would you say it? Bellissimo. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Happy New Year, Andy. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> okay, I, I know what you're saying, by the way. <laughs> Stupendo. Hmm. Oh, that's that's freaking cool, isn't that? Isn't that? That's cool. That's that's that doesn't that doesn't suck. That's pretty awesome. Happy New Year, Nouch. Oh, so right now we're in the coast phase. So there, we're waiting for the um, we're waiting for deploy. It should be in about a half hour, so thirty minutes. Mamma mia! Hi from Venice, Daniel. Come stai? Buongiorno. I forget how to say New Year. Bo bona. Bo bona anni, I think. I forget. Forget how to say it. Bono anno. Yeah, it was close. Not bad. Bono anno. All right. There you go. Banana. No, no, that's banana is something different, I think.
Gabagool, you shut your mouth. But I'm going back to sleep. It's pronounced bop it a boopy. Italian people, see what I have to deal with? See what I have to deal with these guys? Deal with these guys. It's pronounced bop it a boopy. Que cosa? what I got to deal with over here. It's ridiculous. Anyway, Adrian, grazie. Very, very, very much appreciated for the raid. Thank you. Hey, Lunchbox guy. What's going on? Somebody touch my spaghetti. Margaretti. Damn, it doesn't work anymore. They know us. Shh. Job postings for the new SpaceX factory are up. It's close to being finished. There's about to be a Chicago incident in here. Hey, hey, hey. That, that, that. Not all Italians are involved in bad things. Some of us just like fast cars and spaghetti, okay? All right? Uh, spaghetti. Actually, for, for uh, Christmas dinner... Uh, me and my me and my dad made lasagna. My dad and my mom made lasagna for Christmas dinner, and it was it was pretty good. It was pretty good lasagna. It took an, a crazy long time to make. It's all about that winter classic. How about that winter classic, man? Yeah. I gotta run. All right, weather guy. Show picture? I don't know if I... What do they put in it? Uh, I'm trying to... I, I mean, I can't tell you the recipe, dude. It... It was all, it was all homemade, Orion. It was all homemade. Yeah, yeah. Buran is the best space plane. You get the frick out of here, dude. Uh, I actually think I did take a picture of it just because it took so long to freaking make. Let me see. Nope. I didn't take any pictures of it. I have pictures of Tim Tams, though. Just on a side note. Trains, 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 car video game. Yep. Okay. Yeah, Jim, you got to let it settle. Yeah, Hellfish, it was it was all homemade, dude. My uh my folks made their my dad, dude. My dad makes a mean meat sauce, dude. It's really freaking good. Ask Brimo, she knows. If I'm making lasagna, I make sauce bolognese the night before just to ease the work. Yeah, that's what that's Forge. That's what my dad did. They made the sauce. This, they made the sauce another time because yeah, if you make your own, if you, if you make homemade lasagna, like real homemade lasagna, it takes days. It takes days to do it right. You got it. The sauce is super important. The the right type of cheese, the pasta, it all has to get done right. If it doesn't get done right, it, it, it'll take like if you try to do it all in a day, it's not gonna work. Okay, I'm just gonna believe you because you look less American than others. <laughs> okay, Matissimo, my, I'm American, dude. First of all, I'm from the states. From the, I'm from the states, dude. So, like, first and foremost, dude, I'm ethnically Italian. I'm not like, I'm not from there, dude. But my grandmother, my grandmother was, my grandmother was from uh, Parma. So north, kind of north. That whole, th that valley, like, so, valley that goes from, like, like, Modena, Maranello, Parma, that's where my family is from, dude. So, I mean, yeah, you know, just because, just because, uh, you know, just because I'm from the States, right, doesn't mean that, 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 you know, the Italian doesn't go away, you know what I mean? Nice early day for you. Every day is going to be an early day, Schmoog. I got work to do. Weird question. 
What's up with DeMar Hamlin? His ticker stopped on the field, dude. They got it. They, they got it going again, but we don't know. We don't know. That's right. Yep. Air Force. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's where. That's where my family's from. But I'm third generation American, dude. I don't know. I only know a little bit of Italian. I need to. I should learn more. I want to learn more. My last name is a town on Lake Cuomo. That's where my heritage is from. Yeah. Yeah. Junie, same same with me. Yeah, Stone. That was scary, man. Scary stuff. Brian, your wife's a pain in the butt. She's always trying to... <laughs> Jeez, Brian. Yeah, Rocky Guy. It's not, it's not good. I'm 1% Corsican. Does that work? I guess. Yeah, Phil, yeah, Filippo, yeah, it doesn't, yeah, you don't, that doesn't go away just because, uh, just because I was born in the States, that doesn't go away, dude. I, ask anyone here, I talk with my hands. That does not go away. It, that doesn't go away. <laughs> that doesn't, dude, just because, just because I, I was born 3,000 miles freaking, east of Italy does not that, that does not make that change you know what I'm saying that doesn't change at all <laughs> you've been to Italy does that count sure no east I thought you meant west more coffee please yeah Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, Andy, it doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. No. I meant west. It's still early over here, guys. You're going to have to give me a second. No Kinder, happy new year, buddy. Yeah, you know, it's you'll come around to the other side. KPLO has arrived in the Lunar Science Orbit. You know what, Forge? I actually had that teed up, dude. I had footage from KPLO teed up. Look at that. I had footage teed up because of that. Because of that picture. It's 921 Central Time. It's not early. It's early for me! Me, by KSB, Origin. Well, I guess I'm gonna make it for- Yeah, right. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just American. My family's been here longer than the country has. Yeah, Roger, I'm not- I'm only- I'm only third generation. That's nothing. That's nothing for the states, dude. Yeah. It's 4.22 a.m. It's early. Yeah, see? My guy. Smirks knows. It's really, really early, mate. I, I- I know, Smirks. I know. I know. I can't, I can't, can't do that the other way. Yep. You sleep around 4 p.m. Central? Damn, dude. So, Boca Chica Vela, I'm, and don't get me wrong, it's better than it was. I am pretty much on, I, I'd say I'm on mountain time right now. I'm on mountain time. I wake up I wake up at eight AM, which is you know, for for the early birds you're like eight AM. What what? Sixteen twenty three? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's the afternoon over there for you guys. So yeah. I'm like one or two time zones removed from the time zone that I'm on right now. But th it was bad. There was a time during the pandemic, like 2020, 2021, I was literally on AEST. I was on Australian time, like, because I was streaming so much. I was on, I was on Australian time, dude. <laughs> I was freaking, was freaking on Australian time. What's up, Rick? The voice you do is awesome. You need to do Korg Marvel Rock Guy for Kiwi. Uh, yeah, dude, I can't. 
My brain hasn't figured out how to do that yet. I gotta listen to it more, Smirks, to be honest. I'll have to listen to more Peter Bick. The fact that it's night somewhere still blows your mind. Yeah, it's the sun, dude. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, right? I mean, it's... Filippo, it's... It's 10... It's 1020 in the morning right now. Still early for me. <laughs> Broadcasting launches, you should live on UTC. It, uh, Jim, it doesn't really matter what time zone you're on. Dude, they always launch at weird times. Start work at 7, but it's a home office, so I get up at 6.55. Ah, oh, your commute must suck, Raiden. It's late and early for me. It's a confusing thing. But the fact that somewhere there's a border where crossing it changes the day by 24 hours. Now that is interesting. Yep. Yep. So, um, fellas, a lot of people were asking, uh, well, we're waiting for the coast here. Um, trains, that's going to cost a lot. Hold on. <gasps> oh no. No, no, no. Oh god. Oh ho, 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 ho. no. No, no, no. Forge. No. No. I uh, This is coming from expensive accidents. Stop it! Make it stop! Make, make it stop! Don't worry, Captain. We'll buff out those scratches. Oh, there's cars in those. Oh God! I, it's just getting a haircut. It's like un, it's like unwrapping a straw. Please, please, please don't don't show me that again. It's a degloved train. It's a free sunroof for you, Jim. That's horrible. How did that happen? Uh, eleven foot eight, man. What the hell? I didn't. I didn't need to see that. The train got gilded. <laughs> oh dear. Who lowered that bridge? Don't bunch. Don't you feel bad for the bridge? Nah, the bridge. The bridge is gonna be all right. The bridge will be fine. Also. You guys want to see something cool? Here, we'll do, like, while we're waiting for the coast here, I want to show you guys this, too. So there's the KPLO shot, which really is amazing. But there's also this. Air Force, the Air Force Research Laboratory, AFRL, posted this. 2023 is here, and that means a new year of research, development, and delivery of solutions for the U.S. Air Force's science and technology for 2030 mission. What the f what what are you what are you, what are you researching exactly? What what are you what are we the, that's the 39A tower. <laughs> what 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 are they <laughs> They're not going to rip off Starship, Boca Chica. They want Starship. That's the thing. The Air Force, U.S. Transcom wants Starship, which is interesting. Someone Freedom of Information act, acted that this. All right, what do we got? Okay. Investigate the technical feasibility of using, see, see what I mean? Of using SpaceX's Starship Super Heavy Launch Vehicle in the next five years to support DOD global logistics transportation requirements. Investigate the use cases criteria for choosing space transportation over other modes, other modes, responsiveness, supply chain integration principles, military advantages, and risks of using Starships, Starship to meet DOD global transportation requirements. 
Project the cost of using SpaceX Starships to deliver DOD good and cargo personnel over the next five to ten years to compare current DOD transportation capabilities. Investigate the viability of an innovations for the government and SpaceX entering into an agreement for surge space transportation capacity with similarities to the Civil Reserve Air Fleet. Pregananant? Now this drummer, this this is legit. Predict industry space transportation capabilities for the next five, ten, and fifteen year future time frames. Uh, that one's gonna be a little difficult. Develop concepts for command and control of space transportation capabilities and implications for space traffic management and domestic international space use policies and protocols. Interesting. Deliver a roadmap to demonstrate the configuration, loading, launch, and recovery of DOD on a ca uh, DOD cargo on a starship, on a SpaceX starship. Holy balls, dude! Dude, there. Okay, so why does the U.S. why why does the Department of Defense why does the U.S. Transportation Command want Starship? Well, well, um. Long story short, why don't we just take these supplies and move them over there? But quickly. You put five tons of cargo, like, oh, I don't know, high Mars rockets, for instance. <laughs> I don't know where I got that example from. How's that how long is that gonna take on a C seventeen to get there? You put you put that stuff, you load it up on a C seventeen, you fly it all the way over there, C seventeen it's gonna it's gonna take ten eight to ten hours to get over there. Easily eight to ten hours. C-17s. I mean, they go pretty fast, but they're they ain't going Starship fast. Starship, it'll get there in fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes, and it can move a hundred tons of cargo over there in fifteen minutes. A hundred tons. So that feasibility study is com trying to compare and contrast to current air logistics systems that US, the U.S. Transportation Command uses. So that's comparing right to the Globemaster 3 Galaxy. So the C-5, C-17, C-130, those are the strategic airlift planes, right? Starship's the new C-5. I don't think it's going to replace the C-5 goalie, but, dude, in this modern, like, okay, so in this, in this, moder in this modern globalized world... Getting supplies somewhere quickly is the name of the game. And what's the what the, what does the U.S. do? We pride ourselves on being able to basically be anywhere in the world like that. You know what I'm saying? So, getting like think about this. You think about like you know if 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 some if some stuff's going down, being able to move supplies to the front lines like that anywhere, anywhere, anywhere in the world, 15 minutes. You can get a tank. Done. No problem. You can't land with a hundred ton, can it? Uh, Grimmy, I don't see why it wouldn't. Because if it's flying... Think about it, dude. If it's flying on a suborbital trajectory, right? The delta V that you would use for circularizing your orbit, you can use for landing. And you can't tell me that Starship doesn't have the TWR with those six engines to land. It could land on six engines. I don't see why it couldn't. The real thing that I'm wondering, though, is the catch tower. What do you do with the catch tower? Does that mean there needs to... I mean, that means you're going to need to build a catch tower in an orbital pad as a receiving and launching base back. So you're going to need to build out some infrastructure for this. So my guess is that in that feasibility report, they're probably taking that into account. I mean, I will bet you the C-5 and the C-17 are very inexpensive to operate. Why? Well... About 75 years ago, there was a war where we basically built airports everywhere because we wanted to, everybody wanted to shoot down everybody else's planes. Remember that part? So, there's airports everywhere. There's not rocket landing pads everywhere, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, they're definitely going to have to build out infrastructure for it, right? But, also, at the same time... You know, if we start converting oil rigs, for instance, into landing landing and launch facilities, the Navy could just tow those suckers around. You could get a launch pad anywhere off anybody's coast like that. Done.
Imagine a swarm of these like in a war zone. It'd be pretty crazy, dude. Or you could have an orbital supply depot instead. Then you're not doing suborbital launch and landing. It's just depot greater than landing. So Tessa, you're trying to tell, tell me that keeping supplies on orbit is going to be less expensive than doing a suborbital trajectory. Um, I think you need more coffee. Halo jump out of Starship. Mm, okay. Not less expensive, faster. Yeah, hell, for something like that. Then egress of materials is a problem. I doubt it would be able to land 40. Problem, blah, 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 blah. Okay, yep, yep. With the right changes, could Starship land on an aircraft carrier? I don't see why not. You'd need a catch tower or something, Katra. I mean, Grimmy, we'd have to we'd have to go test it. Who knows? Yeah, Josh, I kind of agree with you on that. I think leaving supplies on orbit is a waste of time. I believe it or not, it might be quicker, but it is a waste of time because you're going to be sinking money into a space station that you have to constantly correct its trajectory. That. That's like uh, Operation Chrome Dome. Do you guys remember that? So history buffs, you guys remember Chrome Dome? Where the U.S. had this really, 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 really stupid idea of trying to keep B-52s and B-47s constantly flying, on the, constantly buzzing the Soviet Union's border and basically just in-flight refuel, two crews, 24 hours a day, the bombers on station just flying around. And then one of the planes malfunctioned with nukes on board and it crashed in, in a field in Spain. And yeah, that. Yeah, that wasn't a good idea. Yeah, that was pretty dumb. Yeah, we shouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah. They had fully, fully kitted out bombers with nukes on station flying 24 hours a day. That was a really stupid idea. Yeah, that was a really stupid idea. You mean like having an orbital fuel station, you know, like Starship's going to have anyway? Why not have supplies there too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a sure. Why not? Let's just take our station that's designed to move liquids around and move solids around. Yeah, no, it's the same thing, right? You feeling all right? You don't smell burnt toast, do you? If you look at the Air Force Research Laboratory ConOps OV-1 graphic, the baseline concept is launching between infrastructure points, so not battlefield presence. Yeah, Rocket Guy, Transportation Command. So it's going to do... C-5s and C-17s never see the front lines. or If they do, then you've got a big problem. No, I smell dry roasted nuts and salt and vinegar chop chip chip sticks. Why do you ask? No, no reason. A military version that can land like Falcon Nine. If anyone could pay you, it's it's the army. <laughs> yeah. Right. Just saying, the storage of supplies is largely out of the question. And we are landing these things at another catch tower location, which means more infrastructure to upkeep and build. That's yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Rocket guy, yeah, they're they're doing a feasibility study. I'm not sure what they're gonna come up with, dude. Rocket guy, I would say that the one real the one real game changer here is if the if they if SpaceX can build modular launch pads, right? If you're building a pad on an oil rig, the Navy can just tow it wherever you need it, right? You tow the whole thing. We have no problem doing that with an airport, right? I, I think that if, if I was doing a feasibility study, that's what I would probably go and check. Because you can you can resupply that, Navy, Navy resupply, no problem. They already know how to do that. Can an empty, fully fueled Starship fly back on a suborbital trajectory? I don't know, Forge, maybe.
You guys got to remember, I don't think a one and done thing is here because they're comparing it to the Civil Reserve Air Fleet. See what I'm saying? And they're comparing it to current Department of Defense transportation capabilities. None of those systems are a one-way trip. They could move resources, food, and water, but could ammo handle a rocket launch? I don't see why not. A rig is a big target, plus the needed infrastructure to move supplies to shore. Yeah, we really don't have anything like that that's designed to move stuff to shore quickly and rapidly. Yeah, you Yeah, you know what? You're absolutely right. Yeah, no. We don't have stuff like that. No, no. No, no. No, no. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, let's just screw screw that. No, we don't have that. No. You're right. You're right. You're right. We don't have anything like that. Yeah, no. It's just not feasible. No. You guys feeling all right? It's not cheap, but I'm sure the government will buy. <laughs> yeah, hokey for sure. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't put key personnel on a launch vehicle without a launch escape system, to be honest. We're not talking about launching people here, Sam. It's for supplies only. The real question is, which one is more expensive and less sustainable? Because that's the one we'll opt for. Yes? Ah, okay, Sam, I got you. Did I misdeploy? Nope. They're gonna put Falcon 9 into the insertion orbit. Into They're going to put Falcon 9 into the deploy orbit. The SES-2 burn will insert it into the deployment orbit and then deployments will begin. I, you could tell the deployments are gonna begin because of the way it is. Do you remember the SpaceX idea of having Starship to launch passenger-like planes and get anywhere in less than 20 minutes? There was already the idea, but there's a lack of launch platforms around the world. Yeah, that's what we're saying, Valix, yeah. Is Minecraft starting at 12? Uh, yeah, I think so. And just like that, SpaceX did a year's worth of Rocket Lab contracts. Man, salute when you say it like that. Ugh. I can't imagine what supplies it would it would be there would be to make it worth flying on Starship versus having it pre-deployed all over. Yeah. This creature is getting built, so you won't be surprised. Huh. Interesting. Something like that, Tessa, yeah. So the study has to show that there are gaps in this capability already and then show that Starship is the best viable solution for filling the gap. Yep, yep. I wonder if something like the X-33 would be a viable transportation system. Viable suborbital transportation system? Yes, Pixig, absolutely. You only need a runway for that and then you could carry it back. Carry it back on a plane, like the shuttle. 
Curious what an F-35 deployment slot looks like on a starship. I don't know, but that'd be kind of cool. SpaceX is preparing to simulate a fully fueled 5,000 ton starship for the first time on the orbital launch mount. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Been watching Jim Connor videos all morning. I know the XS1 was on the plan. Yeah. Rocket guy, I don't see anything wrong with this. I don't see anything wrong with this at all. That seems perfectly reasonable. <laughs> Anyway, is it really more difficult to build a hypersonic plane jet instead of all instead of all the building that Starship would need? Hmm. Yeah, Tess, it is what it is. I don't know, Valix. Those are good questions. Is this the maximum payload for Falcon? Uh, this right here? Eh, transporter's probably light. Any aircraft built for speed trades payload capacity? Yeah. I, Rocket Guy, I was just kind of fiddling around in my head that it might be cheaper to make a suborbital launch platform it, like, seriously, it might be less expensive to make a suborbital launch platform like an X-33 or something like Starship or an XS-1 than it would be to, like, make a C-5-sized aircraft that can go, that can, like, go supersonic. It might actually be cheaper to just build a, a rocket. Like, now that I'm thinking about it, you need so much, that you, dude, sustain, sustain supersonic like that? Ooh. Ugh. Ugh. Oof. Clearly we just need Skylon. Yeah. Hypersonic has turning authority. Laughs in the X-37. Someone needs to fund Skylon? Josh. Lockheed and Boeing got in on Skylon on reaction engines because their helium precooler works. Pretty dang sure. The reason why we haven't heard anything from Reaction Engines Limited is because they're just quietly doing research here. Quietly. Yeah, Forge. I'm telling you, the more the more we the more we look at Starship, the more it's gonna end up being like the shuttle. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a shuttle style payload bay here, dude. Not because I know any insider information, dude. Like I have people at SpaceX that talk to me about this stuff, but I don't I don't uh, dude, I don't I try to factor factor in like what's the use case for Starship. It's gonna have a shuttle style payload bay. I'm calling it now. The payload bay is going to be similar. I wouldn't be surprised if we see starships with a robotic arm either. That just kind of happens to look like cannon arm. Like, look, even their even their lifting rig. Their their lifting rig ends up. That looks exactly like the shuttle's lifting rig. It's the same. See what I mean? 
that looks that looks that looks really 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 similar Yeah, see what I mean? Discovery, go and drop up. <laughs> Funny how that works. Come on, Bland, 16 month resub. How hard would it be for the US Army to transport equipment from the US to Europe? Let's say Aviano in Italy with 10 starships per day. That's a lot of payload, dude. How hard would it be? That would be a lot that would be a logistical Logistical fun. It's because it was the right design. Adrian, you'll... You will not get an argument from me. I think the shuttle is about as good as you can get for a low-Earth orbit access vehicle. Now, don't get me wrong. Oh, there's an AOS. They have an AOS through Maldives. Telemetry just updated. Let me get out of the way. Uh, he, he, the shut, Dude, the shuttle's design was amazing. It was amazing for what it is. It, it really, dude, it still irks me to this day when I see people say it's not a good design. I'm like, you have no idea what you're talking about. Very hard since Starship doesn't work yet. Yeah, well, Forlan, I don't think you were here for the part where we said it's a feasibility study. So, yeah, we, we know. That's not anything we didn't know. Spice hats have been getting smaller. Nowadays, they can launch two 30-centimeter resolution spice hats on Vega C. <laughs> no, they can't. <laughs> back to our no need for a huge shuttle bay nowadays. We've had a great mission so far. Elon disagrees. AM Eastern recovered our first stage at landing zone one and completed the first of two second stage burns. Now we're Sorry. About 20 seconds Sorry, away this is from a little a savage quick on my part. Reignition of our Merlin vacuum engine. This burn will just be two seconds You're right, to circularize but also... our orbit. So coming up, Sorry. second engine start nice shirt. number two. Okay, here we go. Engine chill down was good. All right, engines on. There we go. Little quick, little quick burn. Stand by for the call for NOI. And there is successful startup SES two as well as second engine cutoff number two. Nominal orbit insertion. Good call. And with that call out from Mission Control, we are in the expected orbit. Now, as I just mentioned, you are watching the Transporter 6 mission. This is our sixth dedicated rideshare Purging mission. Out the engine. That's SpaceX's first mission of 2023. The Falcon 9 lifted off at 9.56 a.m. Eastern Time from Cape Canaveral Space Force Harry, Station just in Florida. We successfully separated the stages, landed that first stage at landing zone 1 for our 161st recovery of an orbital class rocket, and we just completed the second of our two planned second stage burns all right watch they're going to start popping this off with our transporter mission they are dedicated rideshare flights spacex is targeting at least three sun synchronous orbit missions per year in addition to various opportunities for a ride on our starlink missions which launch about once a week the small sats can ride to space on our falcon 9 just said falcon that. heavy and in the not too distant future starship yeah, and we have baby. And 14 spacecraft, including CubeSats, PicoSats, MicroSats, and orbital transfer vehicles carrying spacecraft to be deployed at a later time in the mission. And as I mentioned earlier in the webcast, we are flying some payloads that are really cool to help monitor weather, environmental changes, greenhouse gases, satellites that improve communication for the Internet of Things, and satellites that will measure and investigate galactic cosmic rays and solar rays. Now, for the 114 spacecraft, there will be a total when will of the EJ sat be launched? events. Those will happen just past yes. the T plus 58 minute mark, so just about a minute from now. And the payload deployments will last approximately 30 minutes. Now, unfortunately, we only have partial ground yes, station cool. coverage for the deployment sequence, and the ground stations are how we get our telemetry and these live yes, views does. of the second stage. So yeah, the vent the vent down and the purging out on the engine does affect does affect it. You can see that the nitrogen attitude control thrusters are firing. That's why it looks like it's snowing. On the other side of that blackout, we'll expect to have telemetry and hear audio confirmation of the payload deploys that'll occur during that period. It's also worth mentioning that because these spacecraft are being deployed in groups in quick succession, 
we may not be able to confirm every deployment in real time, while you will hear most of the callouts by our mission control operators, we will try to provide updates for any that we don't hear real time by the end of the webcast. We do have a full list of the payloads on SpaceX.com if you'd like to follow along, but for now, we're going to listen in as the payload deployment sequence is about to begin. Wait, sat one. Separation confirmed. Okay. You couldn't see that on the cameras, but uh, you should start seeing all this stuff pop off here in a second. Easy set two. Separation confirmed. Well, oh, Sleeper see ya. Two, immaculate separation confirmed. Number two. One ten one separation confirmed. How do they deploy them? They're on springs. Literally spring loaded. That's why they zip right out of there. Yeah, the cute little three U cube sats. It's like this big. Maybe the size of like a small shoebox. That's genius. Yeah, hammernails. They just load up a spring with potential energy and then just there's latches, they just release the latches, spring decompresses, bye bye Discovery, go at throttle up. You're a shoe. Okay, maybe they're Chuck Taylors, alright? Because they're skinny, alright? Three U's. It's Chuck Taylors, okay? Do you know? Connect to T1.2, separation confirmed. <laughs> Hellfish, I think that small S these motors might be a little bit imprecise. Gamma Alpha, separation confirmed. For what we're doing here. Bro 8, separation confirmed. Okay. New, separation confirmed. Higgins, separation confirmed. Oh, there it goes. You can see that one. Yeah, I saw it for Disclaimer two, disclaimer, separation confirmed. Hundred and fourteen. Star five. Bye bye. Separation confirmed. Lemur 2, Steve Albers, separation confirmed. Lemur. Are they in boxes? Yeah. Mm hmm. I mean, guys, this is what they wanted the space shuttle to do. Space shuttle supposed ISI to do stuff launch, like this. Cleos KS F3A, separation but they confirmed. They decided not to do that no more. Do you know what the per payload launch cost for a ride share like this is? Ooh. Rocket guy would know that better than me. I, I would guess a couple million, but I'm probably wrong. Keep in mind, that's really freaking good to get something into space. Haven't heard a call for a deploy here. Brooklyn is. separation oh. confirmed. There it goes. Bye bye. Space B one fifty six one sixty seven separation confirmed. I mean, they're imparting a force salute, but no, not a significant force. Expected loss of signal. Reef. Okay.
Price from SpaceX Lemur says... Lemur 2 and Molo, separation confirmed. Says 275000 for a 50-kilogram payload. It does not ISI get cheap. ISI launch Cleos KSF-3B, separation confirmed. It does not get cheaper than that, Forge. <laughs> Can you believe that? So, a couple million, I was overestimating. With a couple million, you could build the payload and the, and launch it. That's uh, pretty good. Anybody anybody want to play Mega Millions? I gotta go buy some Mega Millions. ISI tickets, launch Cleos KS F three C separation confirmed. Rocket guy, that's uh, that's pretty possible, isn't it? It's pretty possible. Yeah, it's on their website on the rideshare spot. That's pretty freaking good. Time to wake up. You can make a one U cube sat and launch it for about 250. Very, very, very possible. Yeah. Interesting. When will we see the first burial in the orbit? Eh, that already happened. Gene Roddenberry's ashes were launched on a rocket a long time ago. That was like back in the 2000s, Bond. One good hype train after tax return season. You could totally fund it. Yeah. How many subs is 250k? Dude, it's too early to do that math. And James Doohan. Yeah, that's right. I got changed the laws of physics, Captain. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Lemur 2 Filari, separation confirmed. Like 100,000 subs, dude. 100,000. Man, that would be nice. <laughs> ISI launch Cleos KS F3D, oh. separation confirmed. That one, that one had, oh, that one had Clock a little bit of a spin. Y, See that? Confirmed. SV, this is a rideshare mission. Always so expected loss of signal. They're, Space BD, ISI oh. launch Poly 10. From Kiev, separation confirmed. This is a bunch of small satellites Long launched on a big I, rocket. It's a rideshare mission. Guardian Alpha, separation confirmed. How much Long money is being I, launched? Separation confirmed. I don't know. There's 114 satellites on there. If Long that makes any sense. Y, separation confirmed. Space Reaction BD, wheels will stop Sony the spin. Sphere one, separation confirmed. Oh yeah. Okay. ISI launch Clyde Space NSL Sat two separation confirmed. Huh. It's called Transporter Six, Ilya. No, it's a bunch of different companies. SV. Uh, there's 114 separate satellites. Some of them are some of them are like groups of satellites, it, but that doesn't necessarily equate to like 114 customers. Uh, yeah. So what what these missions what this mission is called is a it's called a rideshare mission. If ride. ISI launch Sternula one separation confirmed. A rideshare mission is when they just launch. Four Y separation confirmed. Bunch of little small sats. See it going? There it goes. See you, drummer. Flock 4Y, separation confirmed. At 540 kilometers, how long are these expected to last? They'll be up there for a good while, Jim. Flock 4Y, separation confirmed. Hey, Flight Sim. Thanks for the content. Enjoying every minute. No comment on the t-shirt, though. Uh, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, because she'll let you get away with it. 
You have a good New Year's? Get up to much? I was here for New Year's, Grimmy. Did I get up to much? I got up to a bottle of bourbon. Does that help? Block 4Y. Separation confirmed. Good stuff. Knob Creek, man. Yeah, of course. It's good. It's my favorite. Now, this time Shiva. we had confirmation of 33 out of the 35 deployments. But because the spacecraft on this mission are small sats, it can be sometimes difficult for us to confirm the deployments in real time. So we're going to confirm with our teams and provide an update a bit later on in the broadcast. Now, I mentioned it earlier, but we are entering into a telemetry blackout period. Yep. During this time, we're expecting to deploy an additional 20 payloads. This loss of signal will last until about the T plus one hour and 16 minute mark. So we'll be back just before then to get confirmation of the payload deployments that occur during the telemetry outage, as well as we'll be standing by for those final 27 deployments while we have telemetry back. For now, we're gonna leave you with some space tunes and we'll see you back around T plus one hour and 15 minutes. Loss of signal, bingo alarm. Yeah, they're uh, going up over Russia here. SpaceX uh, doesn't have ground stations there. I mean, it makes sense. What loss of signal? Uh, they lost the signal through Bangalore, Ilya, but they don't have they don't have any ground tracking stations up here. So right now, stage two went over the Himalayas right here. And it's currently over Taj Tajikistan, I think, if I'm looking at this right. So like Tajikistan is here. Western China is here. And it'll cross over to Kazakhstan right here. And then it'll move into Russia. The Russian border's up here somewhere. One of the stands. Well, there's there's Kazakhstan, there's Uzbekistan, there's Tajikistan. Um, Afghanistan is right here. Pakistan is right here. Iran is right there. India's over here. Can't they communicate with Starlink? Jack, if they could, don't you think they'd be doing it? Yeah, Turkmenistan is over here somewhere. SpaceX have the satellite. Why lost signal? Uh, I don't think that the second stage has the has a Starlink antenna on it, guys, and I don't think it ever will. Because changing around the antennas on on a second stage like that is not as simple as just plugging it in and duct taping it to the top. It doesn't work that way. Changing around the antennas on anything that flies is a process. <laughs> duct taping, it sounds great to me. I mean, little zip ties, little duct tape. Make sure you give it a good slap two times and say that's not going anywhere. That, that adds, okay? Just, that's not going nowhere. Just ratchet strap that sucker right down. Having the vehicle communicate with Starlink changes the licensing requirements for the vehicle. Bingo. It just seems a little 20th century. Well, the laws are 20th century laws. Does that, does that help? It's better if I explain it that way, Jack. Returning back a little bit back, how much slower would it would a hypersonic cargo craft be versus Starship going on a sub suborbital flight. Well, hypersonic implies below Mach 5, Alex. Every rocket... Or no, hypersonic is above Mach 5. It really depends on how fast it goes. Starship on a suborbital flight is going to hit about 17,000 miles an hour. It'll be going 17,000 at apogee, or the apex of its ballistic arc. Well, it's not ballistic. It's just the apex of its arc. It's not ballistic. It's guided. That glue from the Blues Brothers, yeah. This is glue. Very strong stuff.
Okay, so now we're we're well into Russia here. They're It looks like they're making their way over the Urals right now. So uh, there's like uh, let's see what's over here. So Novosibirsk is over here so over here somewhere, I think. Magnitogorsk is right there. And then there's not there ain't much there ain't much up here. The Ural Mountains are right here. It's a mountain range that's about the size of the Appalachian Mountains that like kind of cuts right through the center of Russia. When Artemis went around the moon, did they still use ground stations or another satellite network to communicate? Ground stations, Klopp, but very, very big ground stations. Um, they would have used... They would have used the 70-meter antennas from, the deep, from NASA's Deep Space Network. These things... These, these antennas are not small by any means. That's a 70 meter antenna. So 70 meter, if you really want, if you want it in feet, uh, take 70 times it by three, give or take. So that's like, it's like a 220 foot wide dish. It's freaking huge. That's a 22 story building from side to side. Uh, that's what they use to communicate. The reason why they would do that, Klopp, is because Generally, launching something like that it. into space is a little bit difficult. Oh. Welcome back to our webcast coverage Hi, Shiva. of the Transporter 6 mission, SpaceX's sixth dedicated small sat rideshare program. Now, we've had a successful liftoff at 9.56 a.m. Eastern mm -hmm, Time, too, Space Launch Nick. Complex 40 in Florida. And so far, we've had 33 confirmed separation How events. Many football We're fields? currently Two awaiting of callouts one. for another 20, which occurred during a telemetry blackout where we didn't have access to ground station coverage. They should We're get also one through Svalbard for this final here. 27 spacecraft to deploy. For that full list of payloads we're flying today, head over to SpaceX.com. Also, really quickly, because these spacecraft are being deployed Discovery. in groups no in succession, we may not be able to confirm every deployment in real time. Xin so Jack. we expect we may need a few extra minutes to confirm these final deployments. Let's listen in. How much Boeing 747 wingspan? It's about the same. So watch for the telemetry to update. See how the telemetry is kind of frozen. You'll see these numbers update here when they get an acquisition of signal through Svalbard right here. I know that SpaceX has a ground tracking station there. Acquisition of signal, Svalbard. See? But see the numbers will take over here in a second. Separation of twenty payloads confirmed. Just updated what you were looking away. Yeah. You missed it. No, you missed it. I'm the one who talks. All right, mouth shut, ears open. Cause I get it. Cause I heard it. Uh, yeah. Okay. I missed it. Sorry. I have to, there's this thing that I have to look over to make sure that people are talking to me. It's kind of part of the job. Discovery. It's, it's kind Go of annoying at times if you. So. <laughs> Sun Devil 19 month resub. Woo! Four y separation. New Year's space. How much money is SpaceX making for these Falcon 9 launches? Block 4Y separation confirmed. Uh, good amount. Oh, oh, second stage is turning a little bit. See the horizon right there? About 350. Oh, that's cool, Paul. Oh. That dish is 84 AR-15s in diameter. Nice. Nice. It's a good unit of measurement. Yeah, it's hard to say what they're making off of it, dude, but... I think a reasonable extrapolation here would be like, look, they've done six of these things. It's clearly Discovery. profitable. No, it's clearly profitable. It's clearly worth their time because they're doing it. You know what I mean? I think that's, I think the fact that they've done six transporter. Four, four Y separation confirmed. Wee the fact that they've done four, four or five, well, not four or five. The fact that they've done six of these missions now and every single Block one of them. Four Y separation confirmed. All of them have had like, the payload bay has been 
Well, payload bay. The fairing has been stacked full of satellites. That should tell you everything you need to know. The rotation frame is on Falcon Heavy. SF-67 just got pushed to the 12th at 5. <laughs> yeah, whatever it is, Aqualux. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Nova Raptor, if you really want my honest opinion, and people ain't gonna like this, but uh, I, I think that's, I think that Starship, or not Starship, I think that Starlink is basically enough for SpaceX to break even alone by itself. This is all extra development for Starship, dude. I'm pretty dang sure. I mean, think about how many revenue streams SpaceX is trying to tap into. Block 4Y, separation confirmed. Contracts with NASA, contracts with the Department of Defense, the Star Shield, Starlink, and then on top of all these commercial missions that they're making, uh, d dude, there's, they're maximizing the revenue streams, dude, which is actually pretty cool. It's really cool to see that happen with rockets. Yeah, one web. Yeah, exactly. There's a one web launch teed up uh, in a couple of, I think it's in a week or something. Do you think SpaceX will achieve 100 Falcon 9 flights this year? Maybe. That would need... We would need two launches a week, Valex. Maybe. Plus commercial crew. Well, that's NASA contracts, yeah. Interesting. Clock 4Y, separation confirmed. Oh, oh, there, there goes the pizza box. Link Tower 3, <laughs> separation confirmed. They're delivering pizza. The space that wasn't. It was a satellite. I think SpaceX is at a seven billion dollar market share. That's a big one. Oh, dude, this thing is just confirmed. shedding payloads. You see, it just ding, 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 ding. Link Tower Four separation confirmed. Now somebody asked if you know the deployment is imparting force on the vehicle. Yes, it absolutely is. You could see it because of the horizon here. They're deploying the satellites, and now the thing is going that way. Oh. Do you see how many, the thing was just popping off satellites? Dude, they're making it rain with satellites. Make it rain! Yam 5, separation confirmed. Yam. Newton answered that question centuries ago. Back that was a big one. <laughs> okay, they had an AOS. I, I didn't hear it. I'm going to rewind real quick. I was talking. Sorry about that. Yam 5, separation confirmed. Acquisition single, Pogo. Pogo. Yeah, see, like, oh, oh. Da, 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 sun, 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 sun. It's bright. Is that 34? Separation confirmed. Sorry, I'm just fast forwarding it to catch up. There we go. Prepare to fast forward. Prepare to fast forward. Fast forwarding, sir. Fast forwarding. Albania 2, separation confirmed. Ooh. Yeah, they fired the ACS. See all the outgassing that's going on right there? Uh, it looks like, Rocket Guy, it looks like that one up there at the front. It, it there's a tip like right when it right when it leaves the dispenser it, it it moves a little bit i think that's induced on purpose
Yeah, I see it over there. Whoa, big one. That's a big boy. What is Star Shield and thanks? Ice Ice satellite separation confirmed. Star Shield is SpaceX's project to for use Starlink satellites for Department of Defense purposes, dude. They're basic. They're basically military communications star star uh, based Starlink satellites. Yeah, SpaceX has DoD contracts for Starlink, dude. Yeah, like big ones. <laughs> Once again, that's not that's public information. That's any that's not anything you can't go and find on the internet. Umbra separation confirmed. Umbra separation confirmed. It's truck stuff scrub for the day or after the launch. Well, well, transporter, yeah, transporter pretty much put a put a damper on that. And I didn't get I didn't get any parts, Kinder. I ordered parts right before Christmas, which is probably my own fault. That's a bad thing? I don't think it's a bad thing, dude. It's revenue streams, dude. Maybe dead scum, who knows? That's a bad thing, too big to fail, you mean. Yeah. Set 35. Later. Confirmed. I don't know, Owens. Guess you saw about Ken Block. No hat changes for today, Alleviate. Whoa, see ya. Sorry. I, um, I was kind of in the way that time. Gratia, separation confirmed. You see, that was a, that was one of the bigger ones. There's the dispenser right there. See it? It's just a, so there's like a hoop. It looks like a hula hoop right there, and then the hula hoop actually kind of separates, and that's what opens the. That's the decoupler, dude. It's kind of like a. Um, if you have a hoop right here, and at one side there's a piece for the hoop to open up, kind of like think like an exhaust V-band clamp or something like that. It opens, and then the, the springs decompress. See the hoop right there. That's cool, Jen. Yeah, you could see it. It's Jen. Is it chillier down there than normal? Because if it's colder, yeah, that may you can see it. It's a lot more crisp because light goes through cold gases better. That's that that that's the that is not the right way to say that. Colder gases diffuse light less, and heat dis, heat distorts light. We we know that. You ever you ever been outside on a hot day? That you're in a parking lot and it looks like parking I lots jiggling. Franciscus, so cold the, the cold gives you a nice crisp view so yeah that's why you could track it you could see it see it clear as day launcher orbiter sn1 space tug separation confirmed it's not humid for sure winter time sunny but not ultra hot yep yep yeah i miss those sunny and 70 sunny and 70 every day dude winters in florida are money yeah that was a big one okay she's coming up over the hudson bay here how high are they up 543 kilometers um it's a little it's like 380 miles 380 miles up there something like that Nice, Tessa. Hey, Marion. Yeah, so you the deploy the deploy is screwing with it a little bit. It's not a, it's not a lot, but it it's enough to move it. Oh, there goes that Second, guy. Ice eye satellite separation confirmed. Oh, there goes another one. That one's like the size of a refrigerator. Separation confirmed. I love refrigerators. Hey, look at that. That's a big boy. This is a rideshare. They have LOS through Svalbard. They should be getting an AOS through Newfoundland here. Or Newfoundland. Huh. 
I love refrigerator. You can see that this, whatever this thing is up here, it's got solar panels, and it's gone. Figure right five separation confirmed. That has a fold out solar panel. That's what those. That's what those plates were stacked up against each other. I would show you, but it's gone. I wonder where my fridge went. I try not to ask too often, but the last time I asked the answer was December. When do you think it will see the next Starship launch? February. Hypersonic. I was wondering when this was going to happen, dude. But if you notice, there hasn't been much activity down around. Like, much crazy stuff going on around Starbase. Down in Texas. And the reason why is because building a super heavy launch vehicle is difficult. Amera Leo 1. Separation oh, okay. confirmed. It it's going to take time. Remember how we didn't hear anything about SLS for, like, months? Years, even? Yeah, SpaceX is in that phase. They're getting all, all the loose ends kind of figured out, and that does take time with a super heavy launch vehicle. Especially a super, a fully reusable super heavy launch vehicle where you have to catch stuff with, the, with your launch pad. That's going to take some time, dude. I'd say February. Well, that's good, Panta. Yeah. They were zero. They were amazing. We're all in this image and you don't know how to feel about it. I, I feel great, dude. This is awesome. Oh, look, you can see the reflection of a deployed satellite. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that might be another dispenser on the other side, though. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, okay. Um, the spinning intentional? Yeah. Um, acquisition signal, boss. Boss? It feels great, but I'm having an existential thing. I mean, it should feel awesome. We're watching a spacecraft deploy satellites in space in real time. That's pretty neat. Hello, hey balls. I'm not familiar with that ground tracking station. Uh. It's impressive how thin the atmosphere is. Yeah, how thin it is. That's 350,000 feet. Right there, from there to there. That's, yeah, pretty crazy. It's the second stage in a decaying orbit. Oh. Dragonfly Aerospace, EOS Sat 1, separation confirmed. That's an orbital tug, isn't it? What is the exo sign? The company? Company that makes the dispensers or those satellites. Bye bye. There it goes. I don't think so. Uh, as you may have noticed, we were able to confirm 77 of the 82 deployments. Now, because the spacecraft on this mission are small sats, and because some of them deploy in close proximity to another, it can be difficult for us to confirm the deployments in real time. I've heard from our teams that we likely won't be able to make confirmations in the next few mi minutes. So we're going to end our live broadcast here, but we'll provide an update on those final confirmations via our social media platforms as soon as we receive them. We want to thank you for watching today's launch, and we'll see you next time. I don't know how to ask, but could you explain how those boxes work? They're satellites, Valix. A satellite is basically just... Okay. It's basically just a computer floating around up there. It's about, like, it's really not more complicated than that, but see, it's not more complicated than that. But it is more complicated than that, dude. What does the satellite do? What is it designed to do? Like, what are you, what are you doing? So some satellites have a telescope on them, but the telescope's facing downward. We call those uh, observation satellites, right? So... You know, how much power does your computer use? What does your computer need to do? Does it have a camera on it, right? Like, that's what all those, all those different satellites are just, they're, I can't say what every single one of them does. Some of them are orbital tugs. Um, some of them are just 
you know, they could be CubeSats measuring galactic cosmic waves. That's what Shiva said, I believe. But, uh, uh, yeah, Zyvox, no problem. I mean, how they work, it's basically just a computer and so the satellites have solar panels on them. Uh, some of those smaller CubeSats just literally have solar panels on the outside. It's just like if you had a computer case, you put solar panels on it. Seriously, it's... I would say that it's that simple. It's not that simple. Manufacturing satellites is difficult. It's a very hard thing to do. Because if you just took my computers and you put them up there, they would fry instantly. Like, instantly. They maybe work for a little bit, but they would get they would get totally roasted. Uh, and they would, you know... Both of my computers are liquid-cooled, but they still need atmosphere to ex for the liquid to exchange heat, so they would they would fry immediately and melt. Yeah. It happens. You know, it, the best way I could say it is that it's just a, it's a computer that floats up there, but it's a, it's so much more than that. Each one of those small satellites is so difficult to make. Making anything work in the vacuum up there is hard. That's a really hard thing to do. What are CubeSats used for? A lot of scientific research. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, I have no hat changes today, dudes. Discovery, go at throttle up. Access tier two, 82 months. Thanks, buddy. Sorry, I mean, how those box with inside satellite work. I know what a satellite is, but thanks anyway. Oh, the dispensers. They're called dispensers, Valix. Uh, how do they work? Uh, dude, they basically have a latch, right? So they look kind of like a filing cabinet almost. You have different drawers, right? But the drawers are, they, you know, the picture the drawer inside of the filing cabinet as the satellite that deploys, right? So basically, you know, how do you open a filing cabinet? You click the button and it pulls the thing out, right? But the drawer has no stop. The drawer just keeps going. It, it works kind of similar to that, but every dispenser is very, every dispenser is different. So... Discovery, go at throttle up. Think about it like this. You have a latch, filing cabinet, and there's a spring on the back. So when you open the latch, it shoots the it shoots the thing out. It basically works like that. It, 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 that's the operating principle. That is not exactly how it works. It, once again, space has this really, really gifted thing of being able to take something that's a, an extremely simple concept and make it really extremely difficult to do. Uh, but yeah, the concept is pretty straightforward stuff, dude. Hey, Secret Spy. Happy New Year. Rhino, 15-month resub. Yeah, kind of like a toaster, Bon. Yeah, that's basically it. CubeSat is an open standard. Here's a detailed explanation. There, there you go, Valix. Check Rocket Guy's link. Like I said, it's it's like a... Here, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Here, CubeSat User's Guide. So there's your dispenser right there and there's your little there's your little little boys, little satellite boys. See? Seriously, it's a filing cabinet. <laughs> it looks like dude, I told you, it looks like a filing cabinet. So this part opens right here. There's your latch. It opens and then there's a spring back here and it just the spring just pushes the satellites out. See? Switch guide, release mechanism, spring plungers. See what I mean? It's not, like, it, it's got to, like, it's not complicated, but it is complicated, but it's also not complicated. A toaster for the whole loaf of bread. Yep. Oh, let's see here. There's your... Electrical interface. So they have a primary and redundant signal. The release mechanism is it picks up on resistance from what it looks like, and the telemetry sensor is switched. A telemetry signal is 5 to 30 volts DC, 6, 6 amp max. That's not very high, guys. Uh, six amps is a little bit high for 30 volts. That's not something you'd see like down on the ground. Like your phone charger is not going to give you six amps at 30 volts, I don't think. Uh, 
<laughs> uh, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that, yeah, it's a little bit for five volts. Yeah, five volts at 60 amps. What the heck is that satellite doing? <laughs> That's a lot of power, man, for a little for a little satellite. But hey, if that's the use case, that's the use case. If that's what you need, that's what you need. That's 180 watts. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, that's a lot of power. 180 watts is a lot of power for a little satellite. Hey, James, tier two, 69 month resub. Nice. Our ops team has successfully carried out the second orbital control maneuver, the Hakuto R Mission 1 Lunar Lander. Sweet. Cat is at the bottom. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, 30 to 180 watts. Like 30, 30 watts, right? So, like, 1 to 2 amp. At five volts, I'd I'd be like, all right, all right, that makes sense. But yeah, that like, dude, six amps at five volts, jeez, what the heck is gonna use that? Yeah, those are the max max values, trouble magnet. But you know, like, okay, you're absolutely right. Those are the max values, right? But that means, you know what this tells me, dude? These numbers aren't arbitrary. That means, that means somewhere. Somebody had a satellite with a use case that was six amps at five volts. Or, you know, to be a little bit more logical, 30 volts at six amps, which makes a lot more sense. Six amps is a little bit for five volts in comparison. Even fast charge phones are 1.5 amps. Yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Electric propulsion, probably Aqualux. Yeah, that would probably be a use case, sure. Yep, there's your, there's the door. The door's, the door has a spring on it too and it just bang, it pops open and then it, I think it just has a stopper. I, I think there's a door stop that I saw right there that holds it open. And then the springs just pop off and that's it. Bye bye. More dictated to the power rails that launch vehicles use. Launch vehicles and other systems in space have a 28 volt unregulated power bus with different currents up to six amps. Yeah, 28 volts, six amps. That's, you, you know, Rock, you'd think, you'd think that, you'd think that spacecraft would use more power, but they really don't. It's really, don't. that's not that bad, I mean, Six amps at 28 volts? That's... It's nothing. Oh, how much does an electrical engine in real life consume? Yeah, way more than that. Bon Ani. Happy New Year, Alex. Considering all their power is derived from solar panels and its heat, it makes sense to minimize it as much as possible. 1.5 amp is normal, if I recall, for the power rail. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole problem for power dissipation. Tell me about it. You'd think they, you'd think they would use more power, but a car, like a car, uses 12 volts. Cars, cars, even less than that. 12 volts. It's nothing. It's not, it's not a lot of power, dude. You could... Don't do this. Like, I mean, because you, know, you get electrocuted. But, like, 12 volts is not... I mean, it really kind of depends on the amps, huh? But, you know. It's not, it's not as much as you might think. Power is heat, power is weight. If you use more power, you have to cool it. And more heat requires more mass for heat dissipation hardware. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, hokey. I'm not saying it didn't make sense. I'm just... Yeah, you'd think... Yeah, 
You think it would be less? Kids, kids drivable cars are 12 up to 24 volts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's at super low amperage, but yeah, that's that's weird, man. You wouldn't think. Anyway. All right, guys. I am going to take a garage stretch break here. That was the uh, that was the transporter six coverage. That was cool. Small sats are pretty neat, dude. Well, maybe we'll do a uh, deep dive into small sats one of these days. <laughs>